Okay, safety. Um, I think I've covered, that's cold, all aspects of safety in various videos over the years. What I've decided to do now is bring all those bits and pieces together in one safety video. Um, that way you know you can refer to it as and when you need to rather than having to look over all the videos. So everything I'm going to say I have said before. <laughs> uh, safety, that's turned off so we're okay. First of all, isolating transformer. Um, I've covered this extensively I know but these chassis are connected to one side of the mains okay and if you get the plug here the two pin plug at the back the wrong way round this will be actually live connected directly to the live pin on your outlet or your socket if it's the right way around it'll be connected to neutral still dangerous you know this is mains we're talking about um, it's fair enough once it's in its cabinet and all sealed up and you well unless you poke things in the back so it's still important to wire the lead the right way round um, but, but what I'm talking about is working on the radio okay so it's plugged in this could be live now so you've got your signal generator lead okay there's your crocodile clip that's the the braid the earth okay this three pin plug on it it's earthed so that is earth right you've got your radio on the chassis happens to be live you click that onto it bang or worse still okay you're holding this the crocodile clip you're holding the chassis like that to clip it on that way you've got earth and live you've got mains directly across you right that's why it's important to use a mains isolating transformer that completely isolates the mains when we talk about live and neutral uh, that is with respect to earth okay we're not saying that is the live uh, connection with respect to that which is neutral because it's AC okay the waveform is like this it's changing all the time all right so there is no live and a neutral they, they are two they're, they're just AC okay there's no positive and negative live and neutral but there is live and neutral with respect to earth okay but I don't know about other countries but back at the substation the neutral is earthed so the live is live with respect to neutral and earth if you see what I mean just to make that a little clearer have a look at this diagram this um, this is a mains isolating transformer mains goes in on the left that's the primary comes out on the right that's the secondary now the live and neutral on the left okay it doesn't matter which round which way around they go um, but bear in mind the neutral uh, back at the power station is earthed or even uh, in modern houses it could be earthed at your consumer unit okay but none of that matters because we are going to use the mains coming out of the secondary on the right same voltage it's a one-to-one -one ratio transformer so 230 in 230 out um, whatever you put in you'll get out the other side um, but the secondary on the right hand side is floating so neither of the two wires on the output of the transformer that we're going to use as mains neither has anything with respect to earth it's not live or neutral um, on the other side on the left hand side the primary the input if you take an earth lead and earth the live connection you'll blow the fuse because that is live with respect to earth on the right hand side the secondary you can earth the top connection or the bottom connection it won't do anything because it, each one has no nothing with respect to earth uh, if you see what I mean. Once you grasp that, uh, then you've got the idea of the isolated transformer. So you can then, with the signal generator, generator lead, clip that onto the chassis. Doesn't matter which way around your two pin plug is in the back of the chassis, because there is no live and neutral. There is nothing with respect to earth. Right, that's that. In fact, many years ago in the workshop, uh, radio and TV workshop where I was, none of the test equipment was earthed. The soldering iron, nothing was earthed. In fact, we didn't use isolating transformers in those days. Um, they were introduced into the workshop in later years, but initially when I started, um, the live chassis, the TV you're working on, the radio, we didn't bother to check which way round the two pin plug was, whether it was live or neutral, we didn't bother. I mean, it's a bit 
looking back, it's a bit dangerous. Um, having said that, we, we weren't standing in a bath of water. We weren't standing on wet grass and grabbing the chassis. You know, we had shoes on. Uh, we're in the workshop, wooden floor. So even if this was live, you'd do that. You're not going to get a shock. Well, uh, say that, you're not going to get a shock unless you touch something else, which ha happens to be neutral or earth. Um, but anyway, you must use an isolating transformer. Mm -hmm. That's the most important safety aspect, I think, out of everything. Um, and that's the case whether you're working on a live chassis radio or a radio that's got a transformer. Bear in mind the transformer in the radio might be might have broken down. You might be getting live mains through to the chassis. So all your sockets on your bench where you're going to use your radios need to be connected through an isolating transformer. Mine's down there and above it is the Variac and the voltmeter's up there so I can turn the volts down. There we are 150 200, 230. Okay, so the isolating transformer, I don't have to remember to connect it. These sockets here and here, they are connected to the transformer. I can't change that, so I'm always isolated here. Right, let's move on. Now, electrolytic capacitors, they hold a charge. I'm going to charge this one up on the radio, get it around the right way, otherwise it'll blow up. Right, don't do this at home. Okay. That is now charged, look. You see, I don't know how clear that was. I'll charge it again. And I'm gonna discharge it through the tin. Yeah. These in the radio, you know, the, the big aluminium can type, this is a, a modern one, a little one. Um, when you turn the radio off, these can remain charged. So if you switch off at the mains, you're then poking around here, zap, <laughs> it'll discharge through you, just like that. Just like that. You don't want that. So, discharge the capacitors. Now, the way you can do that is you can get a lead, okay, one end to the chassis of the radio, turn your radio off, obviously, and the other end onto the capacitor. So, say this was the capacitor. Uh, basically, what, what you're doing in effect is that you're shorting it out, okay? So, in fact, what I do, I get a screwdriver and put it from the chassis across to the capacitor terminal splat. Uh, very often they won't be charged because the valves, when you switch off at the mains, the valve heaters are still hot. So they're still drawing some current, they're still warm. There's a bit of current being drawn, even though you've switched the mains off, and that will drain the smoothing capacitors. But don't rely on that. I must admit, I do rely on that, but don't you do that. So basically, when you want to make sure the capacitors are, are safe, uh, or drained, or zero volts, just take them to chassis. Or if, if you've got a capacitor with two wires on it, you know, just clip this on them both. That'll be that. That will discharge the capacitor. Um, so you're safe enough there. That, that's all you do. When you read about draining capacitors, you must discharge them before you work on a radio. That's all it is, short the thing out and it'll go splat. And then that's safe. Back in the 60s, when I was a boy, here we go, um, there wasn't all day TV, the 24 hour day TV like there is now. All, all you got during the day was the test card. Uh, and they used to put on, on the odd film, uh, like a, a test film. Um, and one of them, sort of, I don't know, a sort of information film now and then, it wasn't really for public viewing. It was for those in the workshop mending tellies. You know, you, you could sort of actually have something to watch other than the test card to make sure everything was all right, especially colour tellies. They had a sort of information thing where they had a chap working with some big capacity, you know, huge things, thousands of volts. And they had a little a, a word to remember, side, S-I-D-E. And that was so S, switch off, uh, I, isolate, D, dump, and E, earth, side. So you switch off, okay, you isolate, which in our case would be you unplug, D, dump, okay, so you get your lead across the capacitor, dump that, short it out, drain it, whatever. E, earth, now that, I suppose that would be earthing that, leaving that on there. So, okay, let's say side, switch off, isolate while I'm plugging it, 
dump, splash it with that, and then earth it there uh, to the capacitor. So if anyone does switch it on, it's earthed. It's, uh, it's just going to blow the fuse. So uh, <laughs> you might want to remember that side. That was a good little film. Um, the chap got back from the dentist and he's, uh, he's going into where these capacitors are and he's thinking, I wonder whether so-and-so did uh, isolate, switch off and dump and all that. And he thought, yeah, I'm sure he has. And he was about to work on this thing. And he thought, no, I'll get this earth rod was a huge thing. I'll just, I'll just stick that on the capacitor to make sure. And he stuck this rod about this long on the huge terminal and uh, splat, it went, blew him across the room. He was okay, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, that was just a, a, a warning. You know, always do it properly, even if you think someone else has done it. Uh, switch off, isolate, dump and earth. There we are. Happy days. Safety really is common sense. Um, it, it, there are difficult times when, for example, I've always said, you know, don't work on a, on a chassis that's on unless you have to. Well, there are times when you have to. You can't do the alignment um, on, a, on a radio. You can't do the alignment, the IF and the RF alignment, if the radio is turned off, <laughs> if it's not, not plugged in. You'll have a job to do that. In fact, you'll be here forever. So you do have to work on the radio at times with it switched on. Um, basically, it's common sense. Don't grab the chassis, even with an isolating transformer, don't grab the chassis and then perhaps your your metal light or your metal test equipment or your soldering iron. You know, it, what you don't want is electricity flowing through you in one hand and out the other. That's the dodgy bit through your heart. So if you've got to move the chassis, try and get used to doing things with one hand. Um, move it like that, you know, like that. Don't grab it with both. Um, when you're doing the alignment, you've got the your alignment tool okay you're aligning the transformers don't cling on to the chassis and then do the alignment with this hand try and keep one i mean there was years ago used to say keep one hand behind your back it's a little bit difficult to, to do the alignment like that but uh, you see what i mean it's common sense um have respect for electricity uh what is it man's best friend but also man's worst enemy it will kill you you know if you if you treat it with disrespect it'll kill you and you don't, you know, radio isn't worth dying for, no matter how nice it is. Even a good old round echo isn't worth dying for. So just be sensible. I get the odd electric shock, so, you know, doing something, ah, damn, I say, damn, just like that. Or crikey, that hurt. <laughs> um, I might say one or two other things. But, um, yeah, I, 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 I do tend to get a little bit uh, complacent, a bit overconfident. Um, you know, when a chassis is on like this, I'll, I'll tip it up like this and I'll, I'll move around it. And uh, there are times when I get a little bit too overconfident and get zapped. But, um, so, yeah, so just be careful. Remember also heat. Uh, some of the valves, especially the output valve and the rectifier, they can get very hot, give you a nasty burn. The mains dropper, extremely hot. That, that'll burn the skin off your hand. Uh, and some resistors underneath the chassis you get some wire wow ones or large carbon ones they can get extremely hot so again you know, be careful what you what you're touching just think before you do anything uh, so you've got electricity you've got heat then you've got metal bits you know sharp metal bits if you're going to reach across for something or come back here you don't want to do that on the edge of the chassis and gash a, a six inch uh, cutting down your arm. I've done that. <laughs> I had a TV in the workshop and like a fool I, had, I was in my teens. I had one of these silly identity bracelets. I mean I don't know why I knew who I was. I don't know why I had to have Ray written on this gold thing. Well it wasn't gold it was some cheap brass rubbish. And I, I was working this old rabbit hutch type telly and I uh, put my hand in to do something. It was on. As I brought my hand out this thing was hanging down this chain and it touched the top of the line output valve. That's uh, <laughs> lots of electricity on there, lots of volts. Bzz, and it, oh dear. Of course, I ripped my hand out like that, caught it on one of the back, they were like little spine up things, um, did that, and I ripped the back of my hand on that. So I got electric shock, I got burnt, and I ripped my hand <laughs> Uh, I've this silly brass thing. I, I, I did this honestly. I took it off and threw it in the bin. 
I thought that's the end of that. I don't know why. I, uh, there we are. You see, uh, misspent youth. Silly things we do in our teens. Good fun though. They were happy days. Talking of happy days. Goodness me. Okay, is there anything else safety-wise we need to mention? Aerials, possibly? Now, there's a thought. Just before we move on to aerials, I've made a couple of notes. HT, or to our friends across the pond in the US of A, uh, B plus, B positive, it can be 400 volts on some of these radios, not this little one. Some of the bigger radios, 400, 450 volts even. That's a lot of voltage. And that will zap you. So be careful there. Um, also, components especially capacitors can blow up they can explode big time um, so what you don't want to do you turn it you've got a radio you've turned it on first time in 40 years or whatever you're winding up the mains voltage you're being careful you're looking for this and that don't get close like this you know don't start looking at that all right there you know what about that there so you see what I mean you don't want to be like that come back in I suppose I should wear these days of health and safety uh, wear safety goggles especially with your soldering you know and using the Dremel the wire brush you should wear safety goggles um, as with a lot of these videos I've made and this one do as I say not as I do you know you'll see me holding a chassis with two hands I've just said earlier don't do that use one hand so it's very much do as I say, not as I do. Talk about heat as we were earlier. Also, when your radio is all done and back in its cabinet and you're using it indoors or wherever in the lounge, don't cover it, you don't hang this over the back. You know, don't put cloths on it or anything. You might put a nice, like a, a lace doily on the top that hangs down the back. That'll restrict the heat flow, the airflow. Uh, that could cause a fire. OK, it's moving away from workshop safety now, but um, I remember years ago um, I was called out to look at a TV. Um, it was a rental TV and this, this woman, she kept, every week she's on the phone to us. The TV's like, it's done it again, it's gone wrong again. I went round there and I said to her, we'll have to change the set. It was only a rental set. I said, we'll have to, I'll organise another set to come round because um, I didn't know what was going on with it. it, it was, they were definite faults each time. She wasn't wrong. We couldn't work out why it kept going wrong. And she said, oh, it won't be long with it. You know, I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'll organise it for this afternoon or whatever. She said, it's just that I've got to dry the washing. And uh, I said, yeah, dry the washing? She said, yeah, the kids, she had the little kids. She said, yeah, like their underclothes and their tops. She said, I'll hang them all over the back of the, the telly because all the heat comes out of the back. And I said, that's it. That's what's been, this is a true story. I said, that's what's been causing all, all these faults. It's overheating. And she said, oh, oh, I didn't think it would matter. I said, that could have caused a fire. And I said, you hang the clothes over the back. That could cause a fire. Anyway, that was it. She never complained about faults anymore. You know, once she stopped hanging the washing, goodness me, whatever next. So there we are. Again, a lot of it's common sense. You know, don't stick your face in the thing. It might blow up. Um, right, what else? Uh, aerials. Yes, let's move on to aerials, shall we? Aerials. There are two aspects, really, two main safety aspects. You're going to plug your, this is your aerial, okay? That goes outside in your garden or up on your roof or wherever. You plug that in the back of your radio. Okay, the first safety point is this. The socket where you plug that in the back, obviously inside the radio, that wire goes somewhere. The radio could develop a fault and that, that socket could become live. So effectively you're sticking that in the back of your radio. That is now connected to the live mains. Okay, someone out in the garden, the aerial could be fairly low at one point or you know, go down along to a fence or whatever. Someone out there standing on wet grass, it's been raining, that's not unusual in this country. In fact, it's pouring now. They touch the wire, zap, they're dead. So that's the first aspect. You must have an aerial isolating capacitor. Okay, it's just a, a simple little capacitor in series with the aerial. And you can get special ones for that. Here we are. Class Y2. They're little little things. Class Y2. Okay, 0.01 will do, something like that. It doesn't matter too much what the value is. 0.01 will be fine. That then, if the mains does happen to go to the you know, uh, to the aerial circuitry, 
it can't get out of the set up your aerial because you've got your little isolating, isolating capacitor on the back of your aerial socket. It's also a good idea to use an isolating capacit capacitor even on radios that, without a live chassis that have got a mains transformer. Uh, you know, the mains transformer insulation can break down, the chassis might not be earthed. I always earth the, that type, but um, it could develop any, any number of faults that would get you know, live mains on your aerial socket. So just do that as a matter of sort of procedure. The other thing about aerials is lightning strikes. Well, not, not only lightning strikes, rain, heavy rain can charge up your aerial. You've got it up high out, you know, you've made a really good job. You've got this aerial high up in the air, really long wire, 100 feet or more. Uh, it's raining hard. Static can build up on the aerial. Right? You grab this to plug it in your radio, that's, the aerial's charged up. Thousands of volts it could be. Zap, that will give you a nasty belt, um, or worse, it could kill you. Um, what do you do? What I do, what I used to do, I've got a knife switch, not where it is now. Um, when I finished every day, I'd pull the knife switch down, which would earth the aerial. What I do now, I've got a relay. Um, now you might have a 6 volt relay, a 12 volt one, in which case you'll need to, a power supply for it. Um, I've got a mains one, it just runs directly from the mains in the workshop. When I switch off the mains to the workshop at the end of the day, and now as you know relays can have loads of contacts, some of them are made when the relay is switched on, some are made when the relay is switched off, you know, so some are open when it's on, some are open when it's off. I've chosen a pair that are that close when I switch the mains off, so the relay is de-energised, these two close. I've connected, I've taken a wire from my aerial to that one and a wire from earth to that one. When I turn the mains off at the end of the day, the relay de-energizes, the contacts close, it shorts the aerial out to earth. So any build up of static during the night or when I'm not here at the weekend, um, it just drains off to earth. That's a good start, that's a good safety procedure for an aerial. Or you know, the knife switch, is, or a crocodile clip, clip that on your aerial, an earth lead. The only thing with that is you've got to remember to do it every day. Um, the other thing is if you're in the day you're working, as I am now, well I'm not working am I, I'm talking to you. I should be, actually I must get on with this. Um, you know, it's been raining hard, the sun's out now. I might grab that to stick into the radio and it's, it's charged up and that could be nasty. I've seen, I've seen a spark leap out of the end of the aerial across to the nearest earth point in this case it was a radiator, it was uh, where I had my amateur radio stuff set up indoors and I've seen it leap like that, zap straight across to the radiator which is earth. So be aware of the of aerials, if, especially if there's a storm about, it's not just rain, if there is local lightning, you know, be afraid, be very afraid because that could kill you. Um, not just a lightning strike, I just mean you know, lightning, a storm nearby, static in the air, that, if you've got a lovely area up high, uh, that could do serious damage. Uh, so that's that. Are there any other safe, safety aspects? Soldering irons get hot. Times I've been soldering, I've, I've soldered my hand. You know, be careful. Spray, switch cleaner. Okay, you're going to spray the volume control. I'll do this one while I'm here. Okay. Don't have it spraying in your eye. That can do serious damage. You know, you don't want to go blinding yourself. Valves, here's another one. I'll tell you about valves in a minute. I said in a minute because I wanted to get some tea. These, especially in the DAT90A type, with a little pip on there, the B8A, they've got the little pip. These are sometimes very difficult to put out, okay, because you've got the spring clip that nips across there. Uh, the best thing to do is to slip that down between the, the base holder and the spring clip leave it away then the valve will come out. I've seen a chap uh, trying to get a valve out, one of these, trying to get a valve out, the glass broke right and, and he, he went like that and severe lacerations, two fingers and a thumb severely you know damaged, he went to hospital, he had stitches, he couldn't use his hand for her, however long. So be careful because these do break, uh, you know if you're pulling it and wiggling it like this, what I do is do it with the clip, as I say, ease the, the little the clip away. 
they put a rag over it and do it that way. Okay, it could cut through the rag, but you know it's going to be a lot less damaging. Um, lighter fuel. There we are. Basically, it's petrol, gasoline to the US of A. Petrol. I use this. I've shown you this on videos before. On/off switch is sticking. It won't. It clicks, but the contacts aren't working because it's all the grease has solidified. Stick a load of petrol in there. <laughs> okay keep working it that will dissolve the grease it'll free it up just be aware if you turn the radio on the on off switch the slightest spark in there in that on off switch enclosure you got your petrol in there bang okay blow half the radio apart and might even blow your head off so be aware of that there's so much i mean i don't know where to stop obviously i could keep going on and on you know i've got a, a sharp stanley knife that i try not to use too often Screwdriver. I mean, there's the times I've stabbed my hand with screwdrivers, um, you know, cutters. I've, I've been cutting something and I've, I've cut my thumb. <laughs> so, yeah, loads of things to be to be aware of. But um, as I say, a lot of it is common sense. Um, and what I'm mainly talking about is the dangers of electricity. Uh, obviously, screwdrivers, petrol sprays, all that. They're dangerous, yes, but it's the electricity. It's the volts that jolts and the mills that kills. So you could have, say, 10,000 volts on an electric fence out on your farm. Touch that, okay, it'll, you know, you might say, oh dear, that hurt, or words to that effect, like crumbs. <laughs> um, but it won't kill you. Uh, lots of volts and no current. Uh, the mills that kills, as in milliamps. You have, you have that electric fence with a few hundred milliamps and zap, you're just dead, along with the cattle and whatever else touches it. Um, so yeah just just be careful as i said it's common sense um you know just it's as i say it's electricity that we're talking about not the solvents and i mean you know, don't go sniffing glue for example <laughs> obviously we use glue in the workshop well don't go sniffing that and passing out and your head goes in there and you kind of electrocute your head <laughs> Right, that's it. I know some people say, oh, you didn't cover this, you didn't mention that. I can't do everything. We'll be here for hours. You don't want to have to watch an eight-hour video. Even then, nothing wouldn't cover everything. So, yeah, be safe, take care, and I shall see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.